Hey, this is Professor Triplett, and today we're going to go over the Edit Mesh menu. All right, let's do it. Okay, this is the Edit Mesh menu, and we are not going to look at every single option in each one of these objects, but what we are going to do is look at the basic functionality for modeling. Um, but if you want a more in-depth look at every single option that's in any of these, then please see the documentation. This is kind of an overview. Okay, so let's get started. All right, let's grab the first one, uh, add division, we'll frame it. And this is pretty simple. Go ahead and hit add division and you can see it went ahead and added uh, basically a division going up and down and left to right, which is your U and your V. So if you wanted to up that division, you could come in here and double that. So this is going to do a division without doing any kind of smoothing. So if I was to do it to this and hit add division, you can see it didn't smooth the object at all, which is different than mesh smooth, which does add the same divisions, but it also applies a Catmull Clark uh, subdivision on there. So that's add division. The next one is bevel. So bevel is, uh, we're going to access the edges for bevel. So I'm going to go ahead and just go to edges, select all the edges, and I'm going to hit bevel. Now it beveled it pretty far. And the number that you're usually going to look at is the fraction. So in your channel box, you have all the numbers, um, but it also pops up this little window here like so. I'm going to go ahead and play with that a little bit. You can up the segments. So now with two segments, you can see that we're getting like a three point arc going on there. And um, depth, you can actually make it go in instead of out. Uh, you can actually turn off the chamfer. So it's just basically just kind of subdividing the edges. Turn it back on. And uh, we're not going to, I don't really use any of these other ones. Um, so if you want to go ahead and look up what they are, uh, by all means, go ahead. So let's jump on to the next thing. So this is bridging. Um, now, if you're going to bridge objects, like two different objects, they have to, you can't bridge two different objects. Let's put it that way. You have to combine them. So if I had these as two separate objects, I'd have to go to mesh combine before I can go ahead and bridge anything. But once you have them combined, you can, oops, let's go like that. You can go like this. Let's delete these two, delete. And I'm gonna go to my edges, double click to grab the whole perimeter, double click to grab this perimeter, and I'm just gonna hit bridge. So you can see what it did is it, it connected the two objects. Of course, they're a little bit off and funny looking, but you get the point. Um, you can add divisions in, so you can add more or less. Uh, you can taper it. Now in this one, let's see, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look like the tapering is working much. The twist uh, should work, but it starts to collapse in on itself pretty quickly. Uh, anytime you use like taper and twist, you usually want to add some more edges in there. So those are just options that you can use. Um, and I really don't play anymore with any of these things. Um, you know, you can mess with it, give it a curve type. Um, but I usually just use it pretty straight. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there's other reasons to to use some of these things. But again, like I said, I, I typically don't use any of those. Um, so let me just go ahead and show you problems you can run into. So if I go ahead and Let's do this. Actually, let's do it from here. And we'll go ahead and just grab three of these. And if I try to bridge the two of these together, it's not going to work. So I'm going to go bridge. I'm going to get an error down here because the borders are trying to connect. It's trying to connect um, more edges to less edges, and it doesn't know what to do. So it's freaking out. Um, some of these tools are also in here and typically they, they work the same. Uh, so just so you know, in your modeling toolkit, you can find some of those tools. 
Uh, so you know you don't have to you don't have to um, bridge an entire uh, an entire uh, you know s square or, you know four edges. You can just bridge two edges if you want to. Let's say bridge. Now you can notice that this is black and this is gray. That's because the the normals are going out this way, and this is this would be the backside. So that's that's it for bridging. Um, so I have every one of these. I actually have an example over here, uh, just so I can make sure I show everything I need to. Um, so the next one is this is actually cool. This is a, this is a new tool, uh, Circle Plane. Uh, actually, the tool is not called Circle Plane. It's just called Circulize. Uh, I called this Circle Plane. So let's go ahead and grab one of these, and I'll just grow my selection out. That's fine, and we'll just hit circularize, and look at that. That's really, really cool. Um, now, if we're doing like um, sub D modeling, um, this is a nice start for cutting a circle into something, uh, but it's not perfect uh, in the sense that if I was going to go ahead and actually finish this off, so that I need to fence. Uh, the circle in and what I mean by that and this is something we'll get into later but I'll just do a quick one right now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and grab my cut tool I'm gonna hold control actually let's not hold control I'm just gonna go like this like so and I'm gonna cut around the circle the problem that we run into with the circle tool is that we get these we get this edge right here that needs to be uh, fixed. So I'll show you how I'm going to fix that, which will basically lead to another tool, which is actually the next tool that we we're learning. So um, there we go. Just cutting this one by one. It's kind of slow. All right, hit enter. All right, so the next tool is collapse. And I'm going to show you collapse is you take an edge, and if I hit collapse, then it collapses it down. Um, the reason why we want to have a fence around the circle is because if we have this one polygon pulling into here uh, and coming to a point, if we go to smooth this uh, or you know make it a sub D model, we'll get a problem with that um, that will not shade correctly. So. If you don't believe me, you can go and try it and you'll see. But uh, if I was going to extrude this, then I would I would need to go ahead and make a fence around it like this. Um, okay, so so I just showed you the collapse tool. You can collapse multiple things at once. So um, uh, let's see, collapse, collapse, collapse. You can just hit them all at one time and it'll collapse all those. Or here's another trick. Um, if I select one uh, edge for like, and I want to get the whole edge ring, and I sh hold shift and double click, you'll see it selects the whole edge ring. If I want to just basically merge these two edges together, all I have to do is hit collapse, and then it basically merges those together. So this is really good for, for reducing polycounts. So we just hit collapse like that. Now if we were to do it this way, you're going to get a whole different thing. That's not what you want. So that, that won't work. <laughs> All right. Actually, we're going to go back to circularize. I forgot um, that there's another way you can use circularize, and this is really cool too. So I'm going to go ahead and just grow my selection out. Eh, let's just do it this many. Okay. So we're going to use a circularize again, and this time we're going to take a look at it. And it's you can kind of tell it looks a little funky. It kind of flattened this out, so it's on a curve, and we can actually uh, fix that. That we can we can change the the uh, normal orientation. Um, you can offset it if you want to. There's a few things in here I didn't go over that are helpful. You can twist it so it looks like this thing twisted a little bit funny. So you may need to twist it back. And then um, for alignment, now I just went ahead and switched the alignment to surface per vertex normal, and now you can see the alignment is actually following the uh, the curvature. So if I was to go ahead and do that on a bigger area so let's just go like this actually let's select this one might be easier to see if I yeah, 
we'll need that many. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit that again, and then um, looks like our twist is a little bit off again. For some reason, it doesn't doesn't work perfectly. And then we'll go ahead and just do that, and you can see now it's wrapping around. Now there, you can actually you can actually average it as well. So. Um, this may or may not work perfectly. I, in the old days before this came along, I would cut a hole using a guide, basically, um, and uh, that was the way I did it. But I will use this where I can, but sometimes it might not work perfect. So the old way is to just basically, you know, shove a mesh in there as a guide and cut a hole, um, like a, you know, a circular mesh. All right, so let's go to the next one. And I think the next one actually, that was supposed to be my collapse, but I already showed you how collapse works, so we'll skip that. Um, let's go to, this is connect. Now connect is, is interesting. Uh, sometimes this comes in handy. Um, there's other tools that basically do the same thing as connect, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and just show you what connect can do. Now I'm gonna pull out my modeling toolkit because it becomes particularly handy when you use the multi-component mode here. So if I hit multi-component, what that does is it allows me to select verts, edges, or faces all uh, at the same time. So right now I have a face and a vert selected. So if I grab an edge, so I, let's do it this way. Let's grab an, a vert and an edge, and then I go ahead and hit connect. It'll actually go from this vert to the center of this edge. So that's just, it may be something that you need uh, and, and it may work fast. You can also just grab, oops, let's just grab the two verts. You can connect those. Um, like so. You grab two edges, or three edges for that matter, hit connect, there you go. So it will connect those three edges. Um, and you can try to push it as far as you, as you want. You might be able to actually get something like this. There you go, see how it, it went right through there. Um, and the example I have over here just shows a few different kind of ways you can do it. You know, vert to edge, edge to edge, vert to vert. Um, okay. So basically, uh, it's 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 pretty nice for when you want to like go through some odd geometry, so you can like, you know, add something in to make this uh, quads or something. You know, if I wanted to, actually, I can just connect this. And if I want to repeat my tool, uh, any any tool you you last used in my, if you want to repeat it, just hit G. So I went ahead and hit G. So now I have a quad here, quad here. This is not a quad yet, so I'd have to fix that. Um, but you can see, you know, that's that's a good good area to use connect. And I can balance the geo out. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. All right, detach. Now we have the the mesh uh, separate detaches uh, different pieces that are all within one mesh. The detach uh, in edit mesh allows you to de detach just one piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit detach and now I can pull this off. Okay, if I move this one, you can see it's connected. If I hit detach, I can go ahead and pull it off. Now they're all still part of the same model, but I've detached the faces from the other faces. So maybe you need this for something and you just want to pull it off. Okay, extrude. All right. Um, let's see, this is, oh, this is merge. I have these out of order. Okay. Let's uh, let me let me actually just show merge since it's the next one in the line. Um, I went to vertices and I'm going to grab four vertices and I'm going to hit merge. Now nothing happened, right? But if we want something to happen, we can come over to our channel box. We can dial in the threshold of the merge, make it larger. So I'm going to make it point one. Still nothing. Let's make it one. Nothing. Let's make it five. Oh my gosh! All right, hold on. Let's just dial this up. Oh, it's not going past that. Let's make it 20. There we go. <laughs> Apparently it's more than 20 units uh, or less than 20 units apart, but it was more than one unit. So uh, basically this threshold is how many units uh, should it search to merge things. So right now, if I went ahead and hit merge again on these two, um, for whatever reason, those two merged without any adjustments. I'm not sure why that just happened. But uh, and the, that worked too. Um, so let me. So an area where this becomes very helpful uh, is if you're doing a whole bunch of like cutting on a model, 
Um, so if I'm cutting a model, for instance, well, I guess I'll cut this one. And I'm trying to cut, you know, but I, and I accidentally get like right there, but I don't actually hit the vert. And then I, I keep cutting and cutting or whatever. Um, you know, I cut here. And I all of a sudden notice like, oh, you know, there's three verts there. Or maybe you don't notice. Maybe they're super close together and you don't notice. Um, you can grab your whole model and hit merge and then set your threshold really low. Now, this is what's strange is it didn't merge these little uh, guys right there. So I'm going to have to turn the threshold up to get those to merge. So I'm going to hit one. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try. There we go. Now we got them to merge. Okay, so they're, they're under one unit away from each other. So they'll merge them. Okay, so that's how merge works. I do use this a lot. Like a lot of times if I'm cutting a lot, I'll just grab all the verts, put the threshold really low until it's merged to make sure that it, it welds any verts that maybe I didn't hit, you know, when I was cutting. Uh, okay, so next thing. Next thing is the extrude, it's right here. Now we've talked about extrude a little bit in some of the labs, um, but this is, uh, I'm gonna go over just a few more things with the extrude, so. Let's go to face, grab four faces, hit extrude, and I'm going to bring out, you know what, I don't need the options because it'll, it brings out options anyway. So, okay, if I pull on this handle right here, the Z handle, it's going to go, it's going to extrude based on the normals of each one of these polygons. Okay, you can see that. So you can see how it's kind of getting wider. It's, it's almost uh, flaring out. Um, let me undo that. Now watch this. I'm going to hit this little dial up here. I don't know what you call that thing, but I'm going to hit that. And now I'm going to pull, and you're going to notice that it doesn't flare out. What that does is it basically moves it based on uh, the... It's moving on world coordinates instead of local coordinates. Um, so uh, it's moving it basically just in that direction, which is the Z direction. Uh, but it's not taking into account the individual components uh, normals. All right, so let's go ahead and just move that out. So you get, that's the other example. Um, and uh, de depending on what you need, you know, you, you may want to have it one way or the other. Now, after I move this out, I can hit this thing and it'll go to the center. And if I want to, I can, I can scale this in, scale this in, or I can just scale it down altogether, like so. I can flatten it if I want to pull it this way. It's hard to see, but you can see there's this little tiny ridge right here. Now, if I pull it this way, see it starts to flatten. Now, if you keep pulling, it actually goes, it like inverts. So you don't want that. So just pull it to the center if you want to flatten it. Unless you want to invert it, then you might want to overdo it um, so okay that's basically one part of this now let's move on to the next part I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to grab four of these I'm going to hit G to repeat my tool now I'm going to turn off keep faces together so I'm going to turn that off and you can see what's going to happen there so it'll extrude uh, all of these uh, individually I could also turn up my division so if you want to put some segments in there you can uh, offset lets you manipulate uh, you know an angle uh, local Z offset is going off of the local Z which it's already doing now if I click on this it still allows you to local Z offset so just so you know the thickness is just the overall um, you know moving off of the normal direction that you've chosen okay so I could manipulate this up and down if I want uh, left and right, whatever I want to. All right, so of course, the last thing with extrude is the extrude along spline. So you grab all of these and then you shift select your, your curve, which it's not letting me select. So let's just get back to object mode. Okay, we can select it, so let's find out why. There we go. I just had to deselect the object for some reason. Um, not sure why, but it wasn't working. So if I go ahead and hit extrude now, it automatically knows that I want to go along that 
that curve. And so I'm going to go ahead and add divisions so it looks nicer. And you can play around with this. It, it might give you something that you want. Mess around with that. Uh, that's probably not going to give you anything you like. Um, you can see, you know what, actually, yeah, it does, I don't think this, it does work, actually, I can see it's faceted, but it's moving them all along the, the curve, and, and they look like they're together anyway, so that might not, that might not help you that much. Um, so, yeah, the, this is a very useful tool uh, when you're, when you're working, um, and you need, like, a specific, uh, a specific extrusion to go out in a specific shape, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's move on. Um, well, you know what, before we move on, I believe there's another, I believe if we go to object mode and here, um, let's see, I did not, so these options were not in there, the twist. Okay, so they're in my channel box. But they're not in my, uh, they weren't in the extrude panel for um, when I extruded along the, the curve. Not sure why, uh, but for some reason they, they weren't there. So I was just showing that you can go in your channel box and there's a few other settings you can play with. Uh, you know, thickness and stuff. So, okay, so let's move on to the next one. All right, the next one is... Uh, merge to center. Okay, very simple. Very much like the merge tool. Um, you can grab a number of vertices and just hit merge to center and it merges all those to the middle. So, you know, that might be another area where you're, you're cutting something and you have two verts that are really close. So you didn't actually hit the vert when you were cutting. Grab the two verts and then merge it to center. Or, you know, you can, you know, it works kind of like a collapse as well. You can collapse two edges together or an edge together, I should say. Just grabbing this uh, and I believe this allows you to even grab across where there is no edge and say merge the center yeah it'll do that too so uh, and all of these uh, well this one doesn't have an option box but a lot of these have option boxes so um, there are a few other tools uh, within there that you might be able to manipulate um, okay so let's move to the next one all right this one is uh, transform. Okay, so transform is interesting. Um, uh, I used to use a program called 3D Studio Max, uh, and in 3D Studio Max we called it a push. We had a modifier called push, and basically what it would do is it would move the mesh along its normals for each vert. Um, and now this transform tool does a whole bunch of stuff. I, I put an example here. So you can see that what I did was I took a little section of this piece off and then I grew it using the transform tool. So if I grab this and make it transform, hold along its local Z, um, it's it's almost like scaling in, in a sense, but you can grab like one little section and, and have that kind of grow around uh, another piece. So let me go ahead and just grab this one. Actually want that one. All right, let's go to faces and let's go ahead and transform. Pull it out. And you can see it kind of like shrinks on it based on its normal. So it would eventually like kind of collapse to a center point with a, with something like a sphere. You can keep moving it in and in and make it smaller and smaller. Um, this this does become very useful. It's different than just taking and scaling something. Uh, it allows you to to just manipulate this in a way that scaling would, it might not work the same way. Um, and you also have all kinds of local translates that you can move. Uh, so you you basically can local scale, rotate, um, change directions, uh, and and translate all locally. Plus you can do the, the uh, world space too. So um, it's a useful tool uh, and something that will probably be used more in like an advanced uh, areas. So just wanted to go over that, make sure we don't leave anything out. All right, so this one's interesting. This is flip. 
and I have an example here as you can see that little piece right there so I'm going to go to my vertices and just grab some verts like so and I'm going to pull those out like that now if I go to my faces grab these hit flip it's going to say select a mesh edge for symmetry so I'm going to select the middle and you can see what happened was is it, it because I selected the middle it went ahead and flipped this on that axis and put it on the other side uh, I feel like this tool is not as useful as the next one which is the symmetrize symmetrize I should say so let's move on to that uh, so let's go ahead and go um, we'll do the same thing we'll just we'll grab some verts uh, we'll pull it out like so face and then we hit this and then we pick that middle point and then it, it makes it symmetrical so um, this is more like if you want to test something see what it looks what a shape looks like on the other side of a model um, this is I just see this being more useful but you know it depends on what you need all right so let's look at average vertices I use average vertices a lot if you get some funky polygons that are kind of crunched up and you want to balance them out average vertices is the way to go so we're going to go ahead and go to vertex I'm going to just select all these verts in here that look funky and I'm going to bring up actually I'll just hit it once I'll hit average verts once the iterations you can if you turn it up it, it basically just makes it stronger uh, but it does have a cutoff threshold it seems to just stop um, so if you want to repeat the tool just hit G and as you can see I'm just balancing the verts out it's it's averaging their spacing so um, let me go ahead and go to object mode now look at all of these pieces of history that I just did to get it to look like that so what I want to do then is definitely delete my history because that's not necessary all right next one we are on chamfer vertices this is interesting so let's go ahead and just grab a few verts chamfer vertices you can see what it did is it basically chamfers them of course in this situation it's making n-gons which we would have to fix um, but uh, we can go ahead and change how wide we want them or whatever um, let's just say we were cutting holes right so we could go to our uh, multi-component grab that let's see if it's smart enough to figure out this oops let's do that 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 and let's go ahead and hit connect okay it didn't figure all of them out but it figured out two of them so that's cool so then we would just go ahead and just do this and hit connect so not bad and then of course if we want this to be a circle we could hit this oh didn't work let's uh let's do this one more time Let's go to just the birds. There we go. Now we got it. Perfect. So there you go. There's a combination of, of a few tools just starting off from, uh, you know, using one. So, and, and of course, this is all now uh, almost quads. All we have to do is uh, get in here and either add a segment there. Actually, uh, let's see. If we're cutting a hole here of course you just delete it right so that makes it that makes it uh, get rid of that problem okay so let's move on to the next one okay let's see re or okay I wasn't I'm not doing reorder verts because I just don't ever use it um, but basically each vertex is assigned a number and you can reorder that number with reorder verts so um all right now on to one that i find more useful which is delete edge verts uh oh okay actually let's do delete edge verts here that's probably why i have this edge in here all right so if i hold control backspace that's delete edge verts but you can also just hit delete edge verts and it gets rid of the edges and the verts um let's see something here 
Okay, so if you notice, I just hit backspace instead of control backspace, and it didn't get rid of the verts. So if you hit delete edge verts, well, now it got rid of all of it. <laughs> that was too much. If I hit control backspace on, let's see, no, we just hit backspace then if you want just the verts gone. Uh, but normally I don't leave the verts in there. I don't really have any reason to, so I just hold control and hit backspace. That's my, my shortcut for deleting edge verts. Uh, it, it says right here you can use control delete as well, which I've actually don't think I've ever used that control delete. Let's see. That, that, apparently that works too. So either one works. I don't know why they have two different uh, hotkeys for that, but that's uh, I learned the, the other one a long time ago. Okay, so the next one is edit edge flow. Now this is a this is a tool that can be useful in some cases. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, let's let's actually let's just add some uh, cuts in here. So I'm going to cut there. Now what I'm doing is I'm holding control to get my edge loop with my cut tool you hold control and it'll do an edge loop but then i'm also holding shift and what it does is it snaps to uh percentage increments so i just want to snap it to the middle so i'm kind of just eyeballing it i'm i'm assuming i'm hitting the middle on these they look good so i'm gonna just keep going with it there we go all right yeah so that looks like I've got all the middles so let's go ahead and go to our edges and sometimes it selects those edges for me automatically, but this time it didn't. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, edge flow. So I'm going to pull out the option box. So it's at one, and that's kind of the, the default. Well, not kind of. That, that it should be the default. Let's see. Yep, that's the default. Now you can see what it did. It basically, the edge flow... Uh, it's looking at the fact that this thing was kind of circular and it's trying to match that. Um, you can you can tell it to go less or uh, more. I could actually overdrive this to like two and hit apply and it'll actually go further. Um, but that's not really necessary. Uh, but you could see that you know you could help fix something like if I needed this to be higher poly and more round, I can go through there and make it that. Okay, so let's see. We are getting close to the end. I know this is a little bit long. Um, and this one is our, let's see, flip triangle. Okay. Um, so flip triangle edge. If you have a triangle in here, um, I, I'll be honest, I don't use this that often. I'm usually trying to work in quads. Uh, but sometimes for game stuff, you might you might be using it. But here's our, our edge, and if I hit flip triangle, oh my gosh, it did nothing. Well, you know why? Because actually it did, but it doesn't show it to me until I deselect it. So let me do this again. Flip triangle edge, I'll select this one, and now it shows up. Uh, it's, it's just laggy like that, I guess. Um, so you can just, it turns triangles, basically. Uh, this, the next two tools are basically the same. Um, so let me go ahead and just, let's just grab this and make sure we can, we don't have any history on there, so there's nothing funky going on. Now you may be wondering what these little um, dashed lines are. Actually, let me, uh, let me turn those off because I don't need those right now. Um, those are basically the triangles that make up each face so so even though the face looks like a, a four-sided face quad it's technically made up of two triangles so you can actually visualize that if you go into your display um, so let's go ahead and hit the edge here and say spin edge backwards now that one works you can spin it the other way these are a little bit redundant but whatever you know you could just you could just have one of these and and it would you know do the same thing as all three so anyway um, let's go on. Uh, I'm not going to do invisible face, but basically you can select a face and make it invisible by assigning a visible, invisible face to it. It still exists, but it's invisible. Um, I've never come to a place where I needed to use that, but it's in there for some reason. So, uh, if somebody knows why it's in there, please point me to a video I can watch or something because I'd love to know. Uh, let's see, let's go on to the next one. So, um, this actually... 
was my spin edge, so we're skipping that because I did it all in one example. This would be, let's see, oh yeah, duplicate. Okay, so um, sometimes you want to duplicate a piece. Let's just hold Control Shift, to make sure we get everything. We will go back to shaded, and I'll just duplicate, and then if I move it this way, it's gonna go all wonky, see that? Click on this, and then you can move it in world space. So you can see, it just duplicated the pieces that I had selected. So that comes in handy for sure. Um, this is for extract. So let me go ahead and just hit extract here. Now what this did that's different from um, the, the detach is that this actually made it a separate object. So we now have two objects here. Okay, so that's what, that's what detach is for. Or I should say, sorry, extract. That's what extract is for. Okay, this is for poke or wedge. Looks like I, I kind of skipped one. That's okay, we'll figure it out. All right, I'm gonna hit poke and it's kind of hard to see. Let me turn on the shaded. So it basically just turned this thing into four triangles with a center vertex. So there's areas where this might be handy in modeling. So that's what it does. All right. Next one, wedge. Oh, you know, we can use the same thing for wedge. Let's go ahead and grab this right here. Now, wedge is a pretty interesting tool. It's got some pretty good use. Uh, let's go ahead and just I'm gonna hit wedge. Oh, problem. Okay, so you gotta do multi-component. So you wanna grab a face and then an edge and then a wedge. And look at that. So it, it goes ahead and extrudes basically, but it does it based on this, on this um, edge that you select. Now if I go into my channel box, let's go into the wedge, we can play around with how far it goes, uh, how many divisions are there, make it smoother, make it less, we could just want a triangle coming off, something like that. Uh, you can play around with the, you know, the center's not doing anything for me right now. Let's see if the axis does either. Not really. Uh, that might be something that you have to set up before you activate the tool. So uh, you might have to go like this. Let's see, arc angle for, yeah, it doesn't really have any of those other settings on it. So I'd have to look in, I've never used it with uh, these extended uh, settings in here. So I'd have to look it up to see um, what these do. Uh, but that's, in the, that, that's what I was saying for uh, if you want to know these tools deeper, go look it up in the documentation. I'm just giving you a, you know, the roundabout. Okay, so next one. Now this is this is fun stuff. This this can really really help when you're modeling. And this is the <coughs> excuse me project on curve. I mean project curve on mesh. So uh, basically, I have a curve here. I'm gonna pull it up. You can see the curves there and a mesh underneath it. And what I can do is I can actually shoot this curve onto the mesh. And what it does is it, it'll work on your screen space. So if I go ahead and go to my top view, this is how you really want to do it like this. So you grab the, grab the uh, mesh, grab the curve, and then say project curve on mesh. Let's go back to our, our uh, three quarter so you can see our inner perspective view, what it's doing. Now, with this curve is still selected, I can say split mesh with selected curve. So now that I've done that, the faces, let's see if it worked right. Uh, let's just move it away from that curve. So it doesn't, let me do it like this. There we go. I think that's what I had to do. Yeah. So I didn't have the I didn't actually have the faces selected. So this time it actually did the cut. Um, still hard to see. There we go. Um, so if you needed to get like a, a nice swoopy cut on something like that, uh, that's a good way to do it. Um, I would definitely delete the history when you're done, so it just de detaches it from that uh, from that curve. So then that way, you know, it's living in its own world, and if you move the curve, it's not going to mess with it. Now this is a more uh, interesting look at this. So I'm going to go ahead and let's put the shade back on. 
Now I have, so in the situation here is what I've done is I've already projected the curve onto um, this mesh. Now the curve's a little weird because it cuts off and it doesn't keep cutting through the mesh. Um, but let's go ahead and actually fix that. So let's go ahead and just, so actually, you know what? Now's a good time to show you one little trick here. Let's go ahead and go into Windows and we're going to General Editors and Hypergraph Connections. So um, in this, now whatever object I have selected, it's gonna, it's gonna focus on that. Um, this is basically like all the nodes that are connected that are making up this guy right here that we had selected. So um, if we want to delete something that's connected to it, like this curve shape, so it's actually not that curve shape we want. Let's see, we want the project. Uh, might have to delete this one off. So let's go ahead and hit delete. And it actually deleted the curve. I think the problem is, is that I already split it with, with the thing. So, oh yeah, that's right here, poly split. Let me see if I delete that. One of these things will work. Ah. I think that's okay. That's one of them. Delete. Now we just all right. That was the one. That was the one. Okay. So um, <laughs> I went through all that. I was deleting the wrong ones, but this was this was uh, ad libbed. I didn't have planned to go through and do this. But what I wanted to show you is, I'm going to grab this curve and I'm going to bring it over here because it's really the same curve. Um, and let's just bring it up a little bit like so. And in the top view, I'm going to make sure, let's go ahead and close a few of these things here. I'm going to make sure that, that I fix this so this curve is actually cutting all the way through. Because um, the example I had before, it, it kind of looked a little weird. Uh, so let's just, let's just go like that. That's fine. So um, now, grab this, grab the mesh project curve on mesh, we can go to our perspective, and now you can see it actually shot that thing all the way through this mesh. And now, of course, we select this, and we can say cut. So I can go ahead and select this, and if I pull it out, you can see that it has cut those, it has cut those curves into this mesh. And so you, if you needed to get like a really interesting shape cut out of this, that's one way to do it. Now, it's not creating the cleanest geometry, so um, there would be some cleanup, you know, that you would need to do with some of this geometry. For instance, you know, kind of collapsing a few things and uh, getting rid of triangles and stuff like that. Um, this is kind of employing a few of the uh, tools that we just used, merge the center, um so anyway you would you would want to clean up this geometry uh, if you're going to use it because you can see there's some shading problems going on here um, but uh, but definitely an interesting tool and and can help you get some some interesting shapes uh, while you're modeling so okay so that that sums it up. It's a long video. It's 43 minutes, but uh, basically, so the homework is uh, you're going to repeat all the stuff that I'm doing here. So you're gonna, I'm gonna hand you this file, and it's gonna be the first line up with nothing done on it, um, and you're going to demonstrate each one of these, um, basically each one of these uh, tools as you go along here. Um, you don't have to fence this one in, but if you do, you'll make me happier. Um, so basically just go through the video, follow along, and um, so it, and then let me just like give some specifics for some of these. Um, for this one, uh, the flip, as long as you know what it does, that's fine. But what I would rather see is like one that you had like these pulled out and then the other one that you did the symmetry on or the symmetrize. Um, 
So uh, this one, um, go ahead and do the whole cut, cut the hole and everything and do the little cuts on it just like I did. Uh, just delete some edges out of this. Go ahead and, and uh, edit the uh, edge flow. Uh, with this one, it's kind of hard to show um, that you're turning the edges, so uh, uh, just play with it and, and know what it does. Um, this one you can show off that you pull the piece off. This one you can do the same. The wedge and the poke, you can do the same thing. And the curve with the cut, you can do the same thing. So you could do um, these models here. So um, what I'll do is I will save, I won't save this file out. I'll give you what uh, this file looked like when I originally opened it. And that's, you will work off of this file. Um, I'm just realizing that I have uh, Maya 2018 and you may have 2017 or 16. So I think what I'm gonna end up having to do is actually give you an FBX file that you should be able to import and the FBX should just have the geometry information in it and it should have the proper naming. So um, I'll double check on that, um, but uh, that, that would be your homework to go through and just work on these menus or through this menu, I should say, the edit mesh menu. Okay, and then just show me something like this. Okay, um, so for that, actually, don't put it on Sketchfab. You can just do a video of of this. Um, it's not really necessary to put it on Sketchfab. It's kind of kind of a more of a utilitarian assignment. So, all right, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you later.